35192. Want to send me a text? And I think we're up and running again at alancockshow.com. Get the live stream's going. Yeah? Everything is five by five over there. And who do we have to thank for it? Let me look. Jenny Wankajock. <laughs> Jenny Wankajack or Jock? Uh, your guess is I guess, mine. yeah. You know, okay. Well. Just have fun with it. Yeah. Just well. Whichever way you want. If you, you know, want Jenny is such a funny name that it tripped me up mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Jenny. Jenny Wankajock. That's what we'll go with. And, uh, hey, Cavaliers are off tonight, but I think they won a big one last night. Uh, against the Toronto Raptors. They came back here uh, at home, 118-93. to That's a pretty sizable uh, win. Raptors aren't an awful team. I mean, they're at about 500. But did they come in here thinking they were going to beat the Cavaliers? Uh, I don't know. That Chris Bosh boy, you got to keep him in his place. He's been in his place for a long time. He hasn't played in <laughs> that uh, nearly a decade. Fred Van Vliet. There you go. From Rockford, Illinois, you got to. No, he's not playing right now. He's injured. Ah, but... come on, uh, John ja Morant. No, no, was never on their team. Oh. Who am I thinking? Grizzlies. Of? Wasn't that? Now I know he's on the Grizzlies. Now I thought they got him from Toronto. Who was the big? Uh, no, he was drafted by the Grizzlies. Ah, uh, come Pascal on. Pascal Siakam. Huh? Pascal Siakam. Pascal Siakam. He was an All Star this year. I think that was an ointment I used mm-hmm. in college. Pascal Siakam. All right. I was reading how Jimmy Haslam, he of the Cleveland Browns and Columbus Crew ownership team, has um, bought. He's the majority owner now of the Milwaukee Bucks. And it seems that his reputation preceded him, not least of which all of the uh, controversy surrounding, of course, the signing and very much paying of Deshaun Watson. Um uh, Milwaukee Bucks fans, at least uh, some of the people, more vocal people in that fan base, are um, approaching the news with some skepticism, I guess you might say. It's a more diplomatic way to put it. Uh, they're a little nervous about uh, Jimmy Haslam. I saw one guy say that this is step one into getting Giannis to the Cavaliers, which you'd have to take a very circuitous route, I guess, to make that happen with uh, uh, Jimmy Haslam. And But, um, you know, worse things could happen. I don't know. I don't know if people in Cleveland actually care, but people in uh, Milwaukee have been somewhat vocal about it. Some people, uh, you know, listen, I don't want to put too fine a point on it here, but you might have noticed when it comes to social media, some people can be, how you say, dramatic in their takes on things. And so if you're a Milwaukee Bucks fan, we have a lot of Bureau Chiefs, a lot of people who listen in and around Milwaukee, Wisconsin, on the iHeartRadio app. Uh, The Milwaukee suburbs, of course, the home to the great Joe Thomas, Cleveland Browns Hall of Famer. Now, if this person had really been smart, they would have gone an extra level down on their Giannis to the Cavs eventually take and somehow worked Joe Thomas into it. Joe Thomas, former uh, Cleveland Brown, from the suburbs of Milwaukee, um, now his uh, basketball team owned in part by the guy who owned his football team. Uh, do you think that Joe Thomas will be in talks at all? With the Bucks? To, uh, to do something with the Bucks? To do, well, to, be a, to be a liaison. He's in the Hall of Fame. No, to I be think... a liaison. You don't think that that's, you know, that coincidence? I think Jimmy Haslam's first uh, priority with that team is to sign Miles Bridges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Is he um, one of the? Is he got sexual assault vibes all over? Uh, just regular. Is assault. that the guy? Okay. Just regular well, assault, but he pled no contest. So uh huh. He, he got three years probation. I think when people plead no contest. They should make them do a contest and <laughs> then let them plead no contest. But if you're a Charlotte Hornets player, you know it's going to be no contest. Mm-hmm. Coincidence? <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, uh, there's a lot going on there, and um, uh, who knows? I wasn't even aware that Jimmy Haslam owned the Columbus crew 
until I read that store. I only I associate. Dan Gilbert owned the Columbus Crew. Now, Dan Gilbert owns everything else. Okay. Uh, he owns half of Cleveland and all of downtown Detroit. But uh, he. Uh, no. Jimmy Haslam owns a Columbus Crew soccer team, you know, where they have um, Crew Stadium, is where they have Sonic Temple, mm-hmm. the big multi day festival that's coming up again this year in May. Back after a long COVID hiatus. Tom Cake, name one headliner for Sonic Temple. Um, this year. Uh, now, first of all, let's let's back up a little bit. Rob Zombie. Let's back up a little bit. Do you know what Sonic Temple is? Yeah, it's, it used to be incarceration. Nope. Our, nope. Sonic Temple is... Like the metal festival. It's a hard rock festival, yeah. Incarceration would be a metal festival, yes. But Sonic Temple used to be, if you want to go down that road, what did it used to be? Uh, Since you are, at least are aware that it used to be something else. I know. You're so close. I mean, you did get a headliner, though, so I got to give you credit for that. Because we, we were giving them away. What did he say? Sure. Who did he say was on? He said Rob, Rob Zombie. Zombie. Rob Zombie. Yeah. Okay. Yep, we were giving them away. Saturday night. Yep. It is no, oh God! It was. So, Give it a second. It took the name down from four words to two. Four words to two. Blank on the blank. A oh, rock, rock on the range. Yay. Rock on the range. Rock on the range. He did a friend, it. But he got there. That's all right. Yeah, rock on the range. That's what. There it you was. go. I remember that. Uh huh. I keep confusing Sonic Temple and then incarceration. One, we're giving away tickets. Listen, to between and the then, yeah, between and between the two of those prison. festivals, you probably could have named any band, and you would have been right. They would have been right. on one yeah. of those two festivals. Yeah. Um, but it sounds fun, and that Crew Stadium is massive. It is huge. Mm-hmm. Yes, Crew Stadium, and it's now four days. It's uh, Thursday through Sunday down there in Maine. People could be asking me if we're going to be giving away more tickets to that. I would say probably. We usually do stuff kind of before they go on sale and then a little bit closer to the date. That's usually the protocol, uh, but don't hold me to that. I was at my daughter's soccer practice yesterday in Rocky River, and um, a guy in a Penguins jersey walked over to me and introduced himself. He's like, are you Alan Cox? I go, yeah. He goes, hey, man. I think his name is Jason, maybe. He's there with his wife and like a little kid. He looks like he's maybe early 30s. And he goes, hey, man. And I'm like, hey, Penguins. He's like, yeah, man, I've been listening to you since I was a kid. <laughs> and I was like, all right. I mean, if he's early, you know, I, I listen, I got to Pittsburgh. If he's from there, you know, I got there in 99. So mathematically, yes. But I'm sitting there with a couple buddies of mine, a couple of other dad friends, because our daughters are all in the same soccer practice. And they're like, does that happen a lot? And I go, yeah. And... uh I said, they don't normally tell me that they've been listening to me since they were a kid. But then I was like, well, let's be, uh, uh, let's be diplomatic about it. Let's be optimistic, rather. Kid meaning what? Teenager, maybe. Teenager, maybe. If I'm saying since a kid, I'm saying at least that's middle school. <laughs> yeah, I, if it were I from mean, like this... high school, I'd say I've been listening to you since high school. Yeah, because you look yeah. like a young dad in that, like, yeah. I mean, early 30s, maybe, right? So if 20 years ago I started there, at, let's say, you know. Uh, 20 plus years ago. Early then 30s it, is just a regular dad. By the way. Is it? <laughs> yeah. You're an old dad. Well, no, no, no. It, when I think, listen, dad. we're in Ohio. Is that young right. dad. Well, we're in Ohio. So I don't know if that's a young dad. There's well, there's 22 year old girls walking around with three kids. So, you know. That's what I'm saying. There's some big rush. Yeah, but to me, that's a young dad or a young mom, right? Well, I'm telling you. 21. I mean, listen, my mom. I'm me when she's regular, 20. like that age, for him to have a seven year old. No, I know. That's pretty standard, I'd say. I get it. I think you're right. Mm-hmm. I just um, wanted to point that out. <laughs> that I'm an old dad? That he wasn't a young dad. Well, no, I meant young as in, like, you know, listen, there are other guys my age that have, not a lot of them, granted, certainly not where my daughter goes to school. I'm easily the oldest dad there. How many grandpas are the same age as you there? Uh, oh. The, have you, have the, you run into that yet? The grandpa, my age? Yeah. No. No, 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 no. No, the grandpas I there. see are grandpa age, okay. like gran- full-on grandpa age. My my brother was a grandpa at 39. That's still so, crazy. Yeah, of course. Nine. He's a young grandpa. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yes, that is a young grandpa. <laughs> it I is, will, right? I will allow that one. I said, you and Kid Rock, your grandparents at 39. So that make You're you in a, great company. A great uncle? 
What's that? Does that make you a great uncle? A great uncle. I mean, I am a pretty great uncle. A grand but, uncle? Um, what is that? I don't think that's a thing. Grand uncle? You're just your grandfather's brother. Just an uncle. But, I don't know. But right. to his grandkids, you're not their uncle. You're yeah, I don't know. One step more. Yeah, I've never met him. But uh, I don't know. So it definitely would be. not a great uncle. No. Well, I'm a great uncle, <laughs> not a great grand uncle, if that's a thing. No, my bro- my youngest brother had kids really young, and then his daughter had a kid when she was like 15 or something, 16. So, um, you know, whatever. He was a very young grandfather. Is that how? And he has, and he got, he got remarried too. And he has two kids. I mean, my youngest brother's five years behind me. So he has three grown kids. He has two grandkids. And then he has like a 12 year old and a five year old. Now you didn't meet Gwen when she was working on 16 and pregnant with your brother's kid. (laughs) (laughs) No, I met Gwen when she was working for Judge Mathis. Okay. Yeah, which just went off the air, by the way. She she, I mentioned to her, I go, so did you know people that were still working there? She's like, oh, yeah, most of the people I worked with are still there. Because once you get on a show like that, I mean, you're not going to jump ship. You're going to work. When I met her, she's working like 90 hours a week, producer for Judge Mathis. But 90 hours a and week. And she worked for Jerry Springer before that, yeah. But you're young, and you're, you got a job in television, network television production. So you're kind of like, I'm not going to give this job up, you know. Which one was more entertaining? Did you ever ask her that, Mathis or What do you Springer? think? Well, I remember- I don't know, because I feel like Springer is mostly, like, contrived. So I feel like that's not interesting because you Well, it's already- all contrived, but I mean, wh- I, I remember her telling me the story that when she, when there was the Jerry Springer pay-per-view, the unrated pay-per-view, one of the things she had to do was go out and find rubber chickens that a woman could put inside herself. That was one of the- <laughs> So if you're asking which show is more entertaining, that probably never happened on the Judge Mathis show. I was going to say, Judge Mathis, at least the cases were real. But I can't believe how long, with all of the Judge shows on television, 90% of which you've never heard of. There was Judge Judy and then everybody else, Judge Mathis. I can't believe that all these shows can last as long as they do. They're syndicated, so a company can put them wherever they want. They're less concerned about ratings. Yeah, they don't cost very much. Don't to cost make, very much. So but it's just amazing they just, that they, they just lo- kind of print money with those. Yeah, they do. Uh, for them to be on as long as they are. I like that real judge that's up in Rhode Island or something. You always get clips of him. Oh, the uh, older guy giving yeah. people like sandwich board uh, punishments or like uh, talking to the kids' mom and the kids' mom's like, "Oh, she never wears her seatbelt, or right. she's always speeding, running through red lights." And, Frank Caprio yeah, is the guy. Those are pretty entertaining, some of those clips. Yeah. I don't think he's an active judge anymore, but he was a, a judge for a long Oh, maybe he is. He was a judge in uh, Providence, Rhode Island. I bet our uh, boss, Rob Anthony, knows all about him. He's a Rhode Islander. I thought, um, what's her face? Sarah Palin was getting a judge show. Whatever happened to that? Uh, I don't know, but I don't think most mm-hmm. people want, uh, I don't. I think a lot That's of people That's not what Nalen Palin was. <laughs> A lot of people don't really care about Sarah Palin. Um, she looks positively normal uh, compared to the people that are t- out there today. But I don't know. If you look up Sarah Palin Judge, it's basically all about lawsuits she was involved in, not uh, a judge show. But I think you're right. There was something like that. We talked that. about it on the show. That's how I, I knew. And I was like, that's too, was interesting. She's no Judge Judy, but I would give it a look. March 2016, she <clears throat> signed to do a judge show. I don't know what came of that. Didn't even see a pilot. Well, it might have been, you know, you can sign a production deal and make a pilot and nobody buys it. Correct. You know, they'll pay you. You'll make a little bit of money. Um, but uh, everybody is operating in the shadow of Judge Judy with those things. You know, Judge Judy, who did that show forever and then, like, re-signed at 75 years old for $400 million or something. And now she's, I don't know what she's doing now. I think she sold it every, I think she sold like all, because she owned uh, all of her like reruns and stuff. Right, but didn't she also, <laughs> she's like on a streamer now. Yeah. Uh, sorry, a streaming service. I don't want to get those, uh, I want to get those um, hippies that called me all mad. Yeah, yeah I think it's just called streamers. Judy now. It's just called Judy. Something Judy. like that. Yeah. yeah. All right, well. Judge Judy Prime Time was a show a while ago, and then 
Uh, anyway, but uh, good for her, you know, to be uh, an old lady like that and to be able to still be calling the shots on your own show. That's the dream. It's all anybody wants to be in showbiz as long as they possibly can and have the leverage. See, I feel like I'd want to be, if I could get the kind of money that Judge Judy has, I'd be good. I'd be like, hey, I got, what is she worth, like $200 million or something? Uh, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, like, I just go go off into the sunset. You could, but if you love what you do and they're oh. paying you handsomely to do it, when you sit up there in a robe, you tell people not to pee on your head, and uh, and uh, what's the problem? You shoot a month's worth of shows in a few days. Most of the time, you're out there living your life. That's a good point. You're kicking it. That's a good point. I was, yeah. Let's I was gonna start say. a judge show. <laughs> Let's do Judge Pound Cake. Yeah. When we... I would, we, we can make that a bit. We could get people to bring cases to Judge Pound Cake. Ooh. Absolutely. Yeah, but how would you rule? What would your Terribly. sense of jurisprudence be? Fair and honest. Huh? Fair and honest. But his fair and honest. Well, I'm the judge, so you're calling me the <laughs> judge. So you come to judge. What do you mean? It's not my fair and honest. It's, you know, what, judge, your honor. It's not, I take Cody out of it. You know, I can't have my... No, that's not going to make it a good show. We need you to have... The show's going to be called... You can't take that out. It's going to be called Cody of Honor. <laughs> This is your chance to get away from the pound cake thing that you've been wanting to do. Yeah. The new show, Cody of Honor, is you in a, a black robe or whatever you want to wear. No, it's going to be a black robe. Black robe. And uh, we're going to have you up behind a thing and people are going to bring their cases to you. Now, here's the problem. Mm -hmm. All of these judge shows, the productions, pick up the judgments, whatever the monetary judgments are, right? Mm -hmm. They're real judgments. And the uh, the people have their uh, stuff paid for. We can't do that. We have less than no budget on this program, so we can't do anything like that. I have to. These would have to be non-binding. First thing, uh, you know, first case is um, me versus the comic book grading. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> yeah. CGC down there in Tampa, who screwed me over. I'm going to bring this to Cody of Honor and. Um, we are going to see what happens there. Okay, who are you ruling in favor of on that one? Well, obviously, I'm going to rule in favor of the plaintiff, Alan Cox. You and have to you have to be unbiased. No. Lady I, justice is blind. It is blind, but I'm saying this case is open and shut. I think they so. They were in the wrong. I think so. So what I'm going to recommend is you go to the Better Business Bureau and give them like a <laughs> zero rating. I don't know what the that, that'll is, That'll fix everything. It will. The Better Business Bureau. You better hit up their Yelp page. Of Tampa. All, yeah. All types of bitches and hoes on that. There you go. That's what I suggest. So that's going to be the kind of ruling you're going to leave for people? Hey, go to their Yelp page? With and, no budget? Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. I guess that's your only... Uh, Give me some money to work with These here. people are real duty heads. So says... Go leave poop emojis in their comments. Yep, Judge uh, Cody Brown. Cody of Honor Cody is of Honor. Uh, premiering this fall on Amazon Free V. Whatever. <laughs> I think that's where Judge Judy Spam is. Spam them with fake business. Hmm. Hey, Bill. Yeah, love oh, the show. Thank you, sir. Um, my mom and dad and a ton of people I know would plan their whole day. Obviously, they were retired, but plan dinner and everything around Judge Judy at 430. It was like a tradition. They had a lineup of Judge Judy, you know, and whoever else, another judge. And the funny thing was is the amount of ratings they got were just crazy. Just because people love to see, you know, Judge Judy give the smart-ass remark to somebody that's mouthing off to her. But the one thing I did want to tell you is there was a Judge Judy-type uh, show. You know, they always have the bailiff sitting next to her, you know, the real tough guy. Yep. He actually, he, I don't know if you remember this, he actually killed his wife. Like, he was on that show. And, you know, he was in prison for murder. But it was, it was I, crazy. I, I vaguely remember that, yes, what you're talking yeah. about. I, I remember when Judge Judy ended her syndicated show, uh, the bailiff yeah. she had was all butthurt because she wasn't bringing him to the new show. And she's like, well, it's like a fresh coat of paint. There's going to be other people there. I'm going to be in the middle still, but it's going to be 
Like her adult right. granddaughter is on this new show or something because her granddaughter is a, a right. lawyer, you know. But you um, know, but how many, how many bailiffs or whoever get that opportunity to you know, be on a syndicated judge duty? Right. But, Don't <laughs> kill your wife I, and you'll keep a pretty good gig. It's like the actor Michael Jace, who people might remember. He was a big, tall, black actor. He played a cop on The Shield. Yeah. And he's in prison for the rest of his life because he shot his wife or something like they got into a fight. And I think he had, his character had already been written out. So maybe he was having a hard time finding work. I don't know what, but he had a great gig on The Shield back in the day. And he's in prison for the rest of his life for murder. So, you know, listen, what do I always say? Don't murder people. Good advice. It's my hot take, right? If you don't want to find yourself on Cody of Honor, uh, don't murder people. Anyway, we can't handle capital offenses like that, obviously. There would be no one involved in the show that would have any legal expertise whatsoever. I'm sure we'd have a, we would have to have um, uh, some kind of legal counsel as a consultant, right? Like who? I don't know. We'll hit up Misney. He's photogenic. He has very expressive eyebrows from what I've seen. <laughs> I got a break. If you want to send a text, 35192, alancoxshow.com. If you want to watch and listen wherever you are on the iHeartRadio app. Buzzard Radio. The Buzzard. is Rove.